Five-minute penalty to Chicago, a game misconduct, and then Manson having words with Stephen. And now, Butcher gets into it. We're going to have a brawl, folks. Stand by. What's up, everybody? Tyler Cash here. It's another episode of Fourth Line Goon Hockey Podcast. Chatting with my boy, Tommy, and our special guest, my friend Shane from uh, the Great North. Say what's up, bud. What's up, bud? I'm drinking American <laughs> beer, but I, I am from Canada, I swear. Shit, where's the Labatt, the, man? Where's that I know, at? Yeah, I know, the Labatt and the Molson. I'm fresh out, man. I uh, So, drinking a Miller, but... Uh, yeah, no, I got to say, when I joined the uh, the Zoom meeting, you guys have like a password. It's password protected, and you don't just let anybody in here. No. I no, feel honored. You should feel special. So, yeah, we're uh, tuning in. I'm I'm obviously here in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Got to say it pro- correctly every <laughs> single time. Uh, and I'm enjoying, as I always start every episode, that when I'm drinking, I'm enjoying this hard cola. Have you guys tried this yet? I have not. So I was bummed out because they announced the spiked Mountain Dew, right? Like the oh. the code red seltzer and the regular Mountain Dew hard liquor, I guess. And uh, it's not everywhere. It's only in Florida right now. So my oh. dumb ass went out and tried to find some, couldn't find any. And I settled on the Bud Light hard cola. And it, dude, it's it's kind of creepy, honestly. I it's mean- uh if you it's want good. to be a Las Vegas alcohol pioneer, I mean, you can probably get a cheap flight to Florida, get yeah. a bunch of it, bring it back. back you know? <laughs> can you bring that? Can you bring that on a flight? Are you allowed to bring like cases of alcohol? I mean, you yeah. can check it. Yeah, I've just check it. it. Oh yeah, keep it under fifty I, I pounds. Time, you're set. Yeah, I, I uh, one time had a went to Boston, and you know they have all that New England IPA beer. My buddy's like, "Yo, man, you gotta get you gotta get me like a case. You gotta go." I'm like, "All right." Literally filled up an entire suitcase just to, just a beer and uh, brought it back for him. So, wow. Can do it. Yeah. yeah. No, I know people in the Midwest freak out about Yingling. So there's, you can drive about four hours away, I believe to Kentucky and pick up Yingling. Uh-huh. So like dudes will go on some serious beer runs and bring them back. But uh, yeah, other than that, I, I usually stick to the bush. I'm a bush guy, you know, uh, I, I know, I know where you come some, from. Some, some, yeah. Some yeah. shit, some shitty water beer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, thanks for coming on, but, uh, just, uh, for those, uh, who do not know what Shane does, Shane does a lot. He hosts a podcast called <laughs> lead singer syndrome. He, uh, fronts a band called Silverstein. Maybe you guys have heard of them been, uh, going on how long now? About 20 years. 22. Wow. Whole legal age of drinking. Yeah. And, and Huge. one, yeah. and then yeah. one that's crazy. Uh, so congrats on that. I know you guys just did a huge tour that got postponed due to COVID restrictions and all that great stuff commemorating the 20 years. Wasn't that the last time uh, yeah, we, well, we, we finally finished it? We were, it was like from when it went on sale, it was like two years later, we finally finished the tour. It's ridiculous, but Rough. Yeah, we got it done. And uh, you know, I mean, things are getting back to normal. I mean, I know Vegas got rid of the masks. Um, we got rid of the vaccine vaccine passport today, literally. Um, so, you know, they're starting to try to get back to some normalcy, whether they should or not. That's for another, uh, another podcast, not on Spotify, yeah. probably, <laughs> uh, but, but, but no, we, um, we got it in and it felt great. It's, it's, it's man, I missed it. Awesome. Awesome. So how are our shows going on up there? Like, is it, are they still doing, you said they got rid of the, the vaccine mandate. So yeah. like, is it still masks or are they still social distancing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, masks, masks are, are still a thing. Um, and I think it's just, it might be today also that, uh, you know, for example, the Leafs are, are, or actually the Leafs aren't playing tonight, but the Raptors are playing tonight, uh, full barn, uh, in Toronto. And, uh, they, they were before they were only allowed to have a thousand people and they weren't even bothering because you got to figure like with you know, both teams and the staff and the press and everything broadcasters and all that, they were like, what are, what are we going to do? Like sell a few hundred tickets. And then who do we allow to have the tickets? So, so basically the Leafs and the Raptors were just saying, fuck it. Like we don't need, I can swear, right. You know, you guys don't care. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Fuck okay. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's hockey, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I saw Austin Matthews said shit just straight up in, in the, uh, in the press the other day, but um, no. Uh, yeah. So, so they're, they're back. The Raptors are back tonight with a full building. 
or maybe not. No, they're playing in Brooklyn tonight. I don't know, whatever. They're but they're they're uh, back with the full building and um, Leafs are going to be two. And uh, so we're 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 back. It would it went really like it went from zero to sixty pretty quick. Um, and it's very debatable up here right now between people like of what we should do, but you know, I don't know. I don't know where I stand anymore. I'm just, I'm just, I'm a little over it to be honest, but I don't yeah. know what the best thing to do in terms of health is, you know? Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, two years into this and we're deciding whether or not entertainment is, is a value that needs to be taken in right now, regardless of, you know, whether it's music or, or sports. And I know Canada's kind of, uh, been hesitant so i mean it's exciting nonetheless as long as people stay healthy to have people you know fans in the building regarding this because the fake crowd noise that we were all uh enduring during the bubble era is just that ridiculous terrible yeah it awkward i and, forgot about that uh, yeah that was just the stupidest thing well and they they blew it too right because they could have done the fake booze for Batman when he was up, uh, like announcing <laughs> that they won the cup, they could have, they could have piped in the fake booze and made it, you know, Hey, you want to make it realistic? Yeah. You need fake right. Batman booze. <laughs> That's really funny. You know, nonetheless, dude, it's awesome uh, to, to talk hockey with you, man. Like we're, we're back yeah. in full swing. We're yeah. about 25 to 30, somewhere in that ballpark away from the regular season ending. So we're kind of getting a good picture as far as teams go. Um, yeah. so yeah, I mean, let, let's start with, uh, you know, where did, where does your love for hockey come from? I mean, have you always been a fan of hockey? Did you always have the same team growing up? And, you know, let's talk about that from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, being from Canada um, and for people that don't grow up here, it's a little bit hard to understand. You know, we we have all the sports are popular. I mean, uh, especially in, you know, I grew up in Toronto. So, um, you know, the blue Jays are insanely popular when I was, uh, 11, 12 years old, they won back-to-back world series, you know, and they were playing in a, in a stadium that held 50,000. They sold out every game, like getting, getting, um, uh, uh, blue Jays tickets was like impossible, you know, in the early nineties. So the reason I'm telling you this is because even though, you know, the blue Jays were that big, the Leafs were still bigger. Like it's, it's, it's hockey is like all of the sports combined and then some it's like, it's like that much bigger, you know, NHL trade deadline day in terms of like Canada sports. That's like, that's like the freaking Super Bowl world series, NBA championship, like put together. And that's just like the trade deadline. Like it is, it is bonkers up here. Um, you know, some of the, the hockey personalities, you know, everybody from, Don Cherry to Ron McLean to Brian Burke to, you know, uh, Elliot Friedman. I mean, these guys are like insanely famous, you know? So growing up here, hockey's just, it's just always there, man. It's, it's a way of life. It's, it's hard to ignore, um, especially, you know, around the time in the kind of early nineties when like the Leafs were actually pretty good, you know, I mean, everybody rem- remembers Gretzky and the 94, uh, you know, semifinal and, you know, Gretzky, he's, people still hate him in Toronto, even though he's <laughs> the most, the, the like Canadian icon, we're all supposed to love him. There's people at least fans still hate Wayne Gretzky because of that. So, you know, um, it was impossible to ignore. And uh, the, the funny, I'll see, it got time for a story. I never played hockey though, which is interesting because I played baseball. I played basketball in high school, did, you know, track and all this stuff, but I never played hockey. And if you got time for a story, I'll tell you why. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. So, so um, my dad played hockey as like basically everybody does here. If, you, if you're like a dude, <laughs> you can... every red blooded Canadian, right? Yeah, if, if you, you know, if you've got, if you're a dude and you got like a piece, a twig and some, you know, knives on your feet, you're like, fuck it, <laughs> find a hockey game somewhere. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. It was, it, was, it was like probably like around, I don't know, nine or 10, you know, that age. I said to my parents, I said, you know, my friends are playing hockey. I'd like to, you know, want to join a league, play hockey. So my dad says, no, 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 no. You, you can't just, you can't just join a league. You got to learn to skate. So, okay. So, so my, my mom says, well, you know, maybe he can learn to skate while he plays hockey. Man, I goes, absolutely not. He's got to learn to skate first. So went to play it against sports, you know, got some used skates, um, went to the, the skating lesson, like a group 
you know, skating lesson. So I'm, I get on the ice and I'm having a bit of a, bit of a hard time. Um, just stand on my feet. And there's like, you know, little kids, like three, four years old, like skating circles around me and everything. So, um, this is like, this is the beginning. Like they haven't even started the lesson yet. And the skating instructors like, okay, everybody, you know, everybody come down to the, to the far end of the rink, you know, like it's like 30, 40 people, whatever. So everybody's down there and I'm like skating, falling, skating, falling. Like everyone's laughing at me. It's like a, you know, like a bad dream, you know, when you're running in a dream and you can't keep falling and you can't stand. It was like that in real life. So, you know, uh, get my mom's in the crowd, you know, in the stands, fucking horrified, looking at me like, oh God. So, you know, I get out of there finally after the 45 minute lesson or whatever, I'm in tears. You know, I'm, I'm just, ugh, I've never felt worse in my life. And my mom says, there's something wrong with your skates. So guess what we do? We go to national sports, you know, taught like the big sports store. We get the fucking Bowers or CCM tax or whatever, you know, we sharpen them up, you know, we, we get the, the top of the line shit. Well, make a long story short. Wasn't the skates <laughs> <laughs> was not the skates. And uh, you know, it's funny. Cause like, I, I'm like a decent athlete. Like I played other sports, but for some reason at that point, I just, I couldn't figure out even standing on my feet uh, on skates and the ass. And that was like, that was the end of my hockey career right there. So you, uh, you're drinking American beer. You played baseball. Yep. Couldn't skate. Shane, are you sure you're a Canadian? Honestly, it sounds like you're an American to me. I know. I know. <laughs> I, got a, I, I got a European passport too, man. Like, like you know, I, I was, my, my other citizenship when I was born was USSR. Okay. So like, I should really be good at hockey. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, uh, you, maybe, you may be taking over other countries too, but we won't get into that either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you mentioned that the, um, uh, the whole aspect of, of the fact that, you know, you're from, you're from Canada and in Canada, hockey is everything and how you described it kind of sounded like how baseball is to America you know, yeah. all the hype is surrounding baseball here and, and hockey is kind of that fourth place sport, you know, we, you know, in struggling of, definitely in most of America. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, where you grew up for sure. Um, although, you know, blues, blues had their, I mean, they had Gretzky too. Um, <laughs> 19 you, games, right. Thomas, so, Thomas so, where'd you grow up? St. Louis. So we'll talk about Gretzky. Oh, okay. Too much. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. I mean, that's the thing. It's like in Canada, it's, if you talk about the four major sports, hockey is like bigger than the other three combined. It's not even close. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, obviously Toronto born and bred, you know, Leafs fan. I mean, yep. let's dig into it now. Right. I mean, it's seemingly kind of becoming a recurring story where like the Leafs do really good, you know, going into the playoffs. It's like, is this going to be it? Is this going to yeah. be the year? Shit always falls short. Right. Yep. How you feeling about this year? Are they the real deal? I mean, they're what third in their division right now. I think they're like 35, 14 and four. Like what yeah. are your thoughts? Do you have expectations well, still or? Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. You, you have to, you have to realize like where I come from, we don't have, nobody has expectations. Okay. Nobody okay. wants to jinx it. Nobody wants to yeah. talk about it. Yeah. As much as we are all talking about it and, and it's all over, you know, uh, TV and radio and everything. Um, everybody is, always worried about it and i'll tell you like i would probably be a little more confident maybe like what as little as two weeks ago before like the jack campbell uh like what the fuck is that like yeah. everything was going so well like goaltending was last of my concerns you know it looked like you had we had one of the best starting goaltenders in the league and a great backup it was like okay yeah. we're yeah. fine and it's been it's been rough so um you know i think as Toronto, as being a Toronto fan goes, you're kind of always ready, waiting for the other shoe to drop, um, you know, and it's just been, it's just always something, you know, like last, last uh, year and against Montreal, it's like, you've got the most ferocious offense in the league and they can't, they can't put the puck in the net, you know, yeah. it's just, it seems like there's just always something. Um, and so, yeah, man, I, I think they're a great team. I watch every game and I like what I see in a lot of respect, even more than I did last year. 
but I can't, I just can't keep my hope, my hopes that high based on history, you know? I mean, as, as both being from St. Louis, yeah. the term is cautiously optimistic. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, taking true. over 50 years to, to finally win the damn thing in St. Louis, you, you kind of keep your fingers crossed and, and don't want to talk about it. And honestly, another thing too, is the fact that in St. Louis goaltending was a huge concern. Even, even if in the regular season, they would, they would light it up. It, it just seemed like they couldn't pull it together when it came to the postseason. Um, and yeah. you mentioned, you mentioned goaltending Jack Campbell, uh, 2.55 goals against 0.917 save percentage, not bad, but if you consider his last five starts, that exactly. what kind of brought him to that, you know, as you mentioned, the last two weeks have been scary. Morazic, dude, that's, that's a whole other story. 3.07 goals against 0.895 save percentage. I mean, one thing that these Stanley cup contenders and champions have in common is elite goaltending. And as you yeah. said, it's kind of a huge question mark at, at this point as to whether or not these guys are, are good enough to, to carry uh, the Leafs to a, a long playoff run. Wouldn't you yeah. say? For sure. For sure. I mean, I've watched enough hockey to know stats aren't everything either. You know, I mean, there's, there's, there's games when like, Hey, you're on a back to back. Like you just don't have it. Like, you know, especially with a backup goaltender, they're playing those back to backs. They're going to have those inflated numbers because everybody's tired. You know, you can't always go by the statistics, but I'll tell you, man, the last couple weeks, <laughs> it's just look bad, you know? Um, and now, and with Jake Muzzin out, I mean, that's obviously not helping the goaltending either. Right. So, you know, you got, um, you've got a lot of problems and, um, you know, the old saying of, you know, your best defense is offense, uh, you know, is somewhat applicable, but then, you know, Tavares has been in a slump. He can't seem to put the puck in the net. So, you know, it's, it's tough. And I just feel like um, enough, uh, as much as we want to talk about statistics and, and, and talent and, and all that stuff, there's also just that it's Toronto we know what happens true. And like that mental game, these aren't guys that just joined the team, you know, like Matthews Marner, these guys have been around the team was it five, six years. Now these guys have been in the league. It's like, it's a while. Tavares is just in his first year as a captain, you know, Morgan Riley has been with the team for seven, eight years. I don't even know how long it's like, they know, and they hear what, you know, what the press is saying. It's, it's gotta affect you. You know, you can be, you can only be so mentally strong. Like nobody's, you know, I'm trying to think of the most mentally strong guy in the NHL. I don't know. It, it's, it's crazy like that you Wilson mentioned or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy that you mentioned that because I feel like Jack Campbell recently in, a, in an interview, I think it was after a game. It could be after that 10 to seven game that they just had yeah. 17 uh, goals with the fucking Detroit Red Wings, which is just insane. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you, if you, if you guys haven't watched that, you like, Find uh find the the highlights on YouTube because it's worth it. But I didn't Jack watch Cam the game. I, I I remember I was busy that night. I was like ah whatever, and I just kind of got sidetracked. And I was like, what what the fuck was the score? You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they were up like five to two going into yeah, the third. Yeah, it was like five two, which is realistic at the I end. I think two. it was seven to two, wasn't it? Going into the uh. I, think like, I, I could be wrong. I didn't watch the game. I mean, either way, ten to seven is an insane hockey game. I, I didn't watch the whole yeah. thing myself, but I did catch the post game interview with, with Jack Campbell and they asked him if he was getting in his own head and you know how he felt, or actually I think the, the question was more along the lines of, do you feel like you need to change your game? And mm -hmm. he said, no, I'm just going to keep playing hockey and having fun. And he seemed to like handle it very casually, almost like joining Bennington esque before he started to lose his shit. Like when they won the cup, like he seemed like he had a, a cool, like calm over him. So I think that's a, a good thing. I, I mean, he's still plenty of time to pull his hat, you know, head out of his ass, 29 games left, 30 games left. I mean, he could be that Jack Campbell that you saw in the beginning of the year. It's a goaltending situation. It's going to have its ups and downs. Yeah, um, for sure. And there's no question that like, you know, they always say a goaltenders, they're, they're weirdos, right? you got to be like a little bit off a little bit of a weird dude to do that. I mean, yeah. you know, playing street hockey with kids, no one wants to be the fucking goaltender. Uh, you know, so it, it, they say that. And um, whether it's, um, you know, guys like some of the classic weirdos, like everyone from Ron Hextall to uh, 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 Tim Thomas, 
classic classic yeah. weirdos yeah. these are these are like real personalities so you know i think goaltenders need to be very mentally strong to go through the grind of 82 games and the postseason and the ups and downs and the injuries and you know i don't know i think if i was jack campbell i'd just be like yeah my i'm, I'm not right my groin hurts. I don't know. Something's wrong. You, you gotta, you, you gotta shrug it off. You know, like, I, I feel like when you feed into the hype a little bit too much of the drama, you have somebody like Robin Leonard who was all over, mm-hmm. you know, Twitter and just being loud and arguing with fans on the internet. Yeah. And it's like, you have to step away from it. At, at some point you need to focus on the game at hand. And that's, as you said, you gotta be a little bit of a weirdo to do it. Cause they're, they're shooting hundred mile per hour rubber, discs at you while you know gliding around on ice with knives on your feet it's it, it's yeah. definitely a, a crazy profession to take on as it is as a sport but i mean the goalie is the backbone of the team i mean you're the one stopping the puck and and in in a lot of ways i know they compare uh goalies to drummers a lot and it makes sense if if yeah if there's no backbone to your song if you mess up the tempo you don't have anything and if you don't have a solid goaltender in net, both mentally and physically, I mean, you, you can't really do much as far as, you know, taking a, a deep playoff run. So, so like the equivalent of a drum machine is like one of those like plastic goalie shaped things you like put in front of the, the net shooter tutors. That's, like the, that's the drum machine of, yeah. uh, of, of goalies. Okay. I like that. What's up everyone. Tyler cash here from the fourth line goon hockey podcast, interrupting this week's episode to talk about one of our amazing sponsors, Schlafly brewing company, a staple in the St. Louis community for 30 years. Now they have four different brew pubs located all over the metropolitan area, including downtown St. Louis, Maplewood, St. Charles, and most recently they opened a location in Highland, Illinois. From stouts and porters to lagers and IPAs, when it comes to delicious and refreshing beers, Schlafly has got you covered. Their Just A Bit Hazy IPA is an easy drinking IPA that will hit stores this February alongside their highly sought after Tasmanian IPA. If you know me, you know I enjoy a good dark beer and their coffee stout is among some of the best I've ever tasted. If you're looking for something just a bit lighter though, their white lager is crisp and clean as it's unfiltered and perfect for the domestic beer drinker that would like to transition to drinking more craft beers. You can download the Schlafly app on your phone to help locate and purchase their products all across the country. Be sure and follow them on Facebook and Instagram for constant new updates and information on all of their products. Schlafly beers are delicious and refreshing. Check them out. You won't regret it. Like yeah, that. I mean, it makes sense. But I mean, so you mentioned uh, Matthews and Marner having some time to gel, which I think is a huge thing. And they, they've quickly became uh, an amazing duo. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, comparable to McDavid and Dreisaitl. Um, and it seems like they've they found their their fit with with Bunting being their their third guy on that line. Uh, one could even say that I know you said hockey's not all statistics, but I mean, the statistics are pointing to them being the best line currently in hockey. You got Matthews having potentially a career year again with 37 goals and 31 assists. That puts him at 68 points in 50 games. I know Marner's been kind of absent, so he's only at the 21 goals, 35 assists. But the the real thing here that I want to talk played about less, played less games though too. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, he, I, missed, he was he fighting missed, injury. He missed some time too. So like points per game, they're not far off. Uh, but 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 go ahead. Yeah, so Bunting is the real talk of the town, I feel like. He's the real story. He's got 19 goals, 22 assists for 41 points in 53 games. He's a rookie. There's talks of him potentially stealing the Calder away from Zegras. Um, yeah. What is your take on that? Do you feel like he's the real deal, or do you feel like if you put any bum on, on a line with Marner and Matthews, they're going to succeed? Uh, you know, I like what I see from him. Like, I, I do like, I do think he skates with them, and I think he, he makes some nice plays. I don't think here's the biggest thing. When you're that guy, you're a rookie, you're coming in here. Your job is just don't fuck it up. You know what I mean? Especially with, with the story in Toronto, like everybody has always assumed that Marner and Matthews have played together for the last few years, but they really haven't. They've been split up a lot, you know, other than on the power play. Like um, when Tavares had that big year, was it last year or the year before, you know, he was Marner was on his line. 
you know, and Matthews was, uh, uh, was with, was with, um, uh, what's his name that, that, uh, ah, fuck with Edmonton now, you know, um, good to a player, you know, who I'm talking about, he plays with McDavid and, and dry cell now. Um, Doug, I mean, we're still fuck. Nugent Hopkins. That's no, yeah, no, 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 no. I guess I'm like, there's, there's not two way player. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, no, um, like, hang on. Um, you just stumped uh, two hi, hi, hockey Zach Hyman. Zach Hyman. Oh, Zach Hyman. Hyman. Yeah. Okay, Hyman. Okay, okay, and then okay. you had, he, he, they were mixed up with Nylander um, and that whole uh, it, oh, equation yeah. too, yeah. for a little bit right, too. Right. And yeah, of course, of course. So, so the fact that, that, um, they've been able to put Matthews and Marner together on a line with a rookie and they're, what you said is they're the top statistical, um, line in the league is pretty impressive. And I think bunting deserves some credit for that. I don't, I, I mean, it's very easy to say, Oh yeah, Tyler, you did fucking put you on the team. You get, you get 40 points, you know, or whatever, but I don't think so. I think, I think um, you need to be able to quickly adapt to those guys. Not to mention like these are, these are NHL. I mean, Matthews is a superstar. Marner is almost a superstar, if not a superstar, you got to navigate that personality. You've got to be obviously the, you know, letting them call the shots of the way that they want to play. So I give him a ton of credit. And I think he's, I think he's more deserving of the Calder for that role than just the, the argument that, well, anybody could, could get the points or get the stats, you know, but Hey, they're winning games. Their, their plus minus is good. They're, they're playing good hockey both, both ways. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think it comes to mind with me is like completely different play styles, but it's like putting Pat Maroon between McDavid and dry like guy just puts a stick on the ice and pots 20 goals. Does that have to do anything? But yeah. again, Bunting's not the guy who's going to the net and just like tapping in goals. Like he's making plays like that's the thing. And I mean, to be fair, like he's had a couple couple of what, two different stints in the NHL prior with the, I think Yotes really minor stints. So like he's maybe has some sort of a understanding of like, you know, what to expect granted Bare, barely counts, barely yeah, counts <laughs> playing with probably grinders on the fourth line. But that being said, I mean, I think it's a different discussion. I think uh, the Red Wings, uh, what more at cider probably takes the call to the guy's played out of his mind for a D man, but different discussion. Sure. sure. I mean, yeah, well, he's a, I mean, he's a what 26 year old rookie. I mean, he's yeah, not, right. Yeah. He's not a, a just a kid, and right. I think, I mean, is that what do you? I mean, Zach Hyman's twenty nine. He's only three years younger than than Zach Hyman, and it's kind of crazy, right? To to yeah. to put him to 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 even have this conversation. Well, and Kaprizov I mean, was weird. Yeah. Kaprizov right. was also twenty six, right? Last year when he won the Calder, yeah. and then yeah. it was so, like it was like prior with Bennington missing out to to Pedersen. Like he was right. like twenty six year old rookie as well. Right. So. I mean, yeah. it's okay, but I mean, that's probably a big part of the success, right? And I mean, 100%. you know, Matthews and Marner were both like 20 yeah. when they came in the league. So it's funny to think that they're, they're probably the same age, those guys, right? You know, before we move on from Matthews, because I, I definitely want to stroke him off a few times because he's the only, uh, he's the only jersey that I own that's not a, a Knights or Blues jersey. Is a um, huge Austin Matthews fan. And I'm, I just want to throw this out there. I'm going to call it as long as that we're going to be doing this podcast. I'm going to remind our, our listeners, you know, every, every chance I get, I think he's going to eventually take the, the leading goal scoring record away from Ovechkin. I mean, well, I know we got some time and I know he's a little bit behind if you look at the statistics of things, but man, he doesn't have any signs of slowing down. In, in my opinion, I think he's just going to keep going. You know, I, I, I think that's a good, I think that's a good point, you know, and if I, it's, of course it's way too early to, to say that, but now I'm looking it up. Yep. He's, he's only 24. He's actually two years younger than bunting. How funny is that? He's only 24. So he'll be 25 this year. So he's not even, you know, he hasn't even turned uh, the age this year and it pretty crazy. Like, you know, he seems to not only, um, just have the gift of goal scoring, but he seems like a pretty durable player overall. Like I know he's missed some time and stuff, but he seems like the kind of guy that's going to, that can play as long as he wants to. And maybe that to me is where I wonder is like, does he want to be that guy? Does he want to be, you know, the Sidney Crosby or the Ovechkin or the, the um, uh, Connor McDavid or the Wayne Gretzky, 
of the league, which playing for the Leafs, like he really should be, or does he want to kind of fall in the shadows? You know, he's not a captain right now. You know, is, is he going to be a, be a captain? Does he want to be a captain? Does he want to be that voice of the league of the, of the, or of the team and of the league? And I think that that is the question. The only question I have, because he's got the talent and I think he's going to have the longevity. I mean, he loves the spotlight and I, I feel like had he had not pulled his pants down and mooned that security oh, yeah. guard, he probably would have been the captain. You know, I, right. I think, right. I think Taveras is the right choice. Cause as we talked about on a previous episode, it might've even been the last one. I said, I call him captain Americas. They just seem like they're, they're, yeah. they, they sit upright and, and they're very articulate and they know the right answers. That's Taveras. That's Joe yeah. Pavelski. That's Alex Petrangelo. I, I, I just feel this, right. this whole, um, sense of just over uh, just knowing how to be professional and Austin Matthews, as you says, 24 is mind blowing. He, and we forget that because he's lighting up, you know, the NHL and he's a superstar, but you, you just realize he's still like growing in his mind. He's, I mean, he's still learning a lot. I mean, shit, dude, it, the guys that we all were at, at 24 are not the dudes that are in this podcast right now. So he's got some time to learn and perfect his game and, and uh, and grow from that, I think. Yeah, and not to mention too. I mean, he obviously he got came into the league. He got drafted by the Maple Leafs, and he's been at the mercy of you know whoever they put around him. Okay, I mean it's maybe a little early for free agent talks, but I'm obviously hoping he stays with the Leafs. And I say give him everything in the world to make him stay. <laughs> but if it comes down to him changing teams well guess what then he's going to be able to align himself with other players that he can play with it's almost a little bit like cherry picking because then what then you end up having matthews with like the best setup guy in the league or matthews is setting him up and who knows i mean imagine matthews and, and mcdavid on the same team or you know he can come Probably to the never happen but you never know <laughs> austin, austin matthews can come to the desert and not arizona we'll, we'll put it that way you know <laughs> uh because i mean let's be real here i was actually about to look it up austin matthews contract has got to be it's not coming up soon yeah he signed a five-year deal in 2019 so it within the next couple of years let's just face it he's not going to go play in Arizona when, when they're playing in front of 3000 people every night, that's just not, that's not going to happen. So I mean, he, he seen it's weird though. He does seem like he has a real, a true love for where he came from. Right. It's, it's kind of interesting, but you know, it's the fucking Maple Leafs. Like, come on, you know, yeah. it's New York I mean, the hockey, like it's, that means something, right. I'm not wrong. Right. No, I, I think, agree. I agree. I think simply put, if in the next three, the, what this year has two more years, if the Leafs don't win in the time frame, I think he's gone. That's my opinion. I mean, I mean, I, I think, I, I mean, hundred percent, Thomas. I think like yeah. he has almost has to. Like yeah, it's almost right. like, like you have to move on from that because, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, honestly. You know, so let's talk about that then. That's what what is it going to take for the Leafs to win this year? I mean, is that that's the real question? I know goaltending was a concern. Obviously, with Muzzin out, you you don't really have as strong of a D presence as you as you need. Um, I brought up to you. I sent a text. What was that like a couple of days ago? I was like, dude, if the Leafs could somehow go after Mark Andre Fleury, yeah, yeah, I, I think that would be insane. That would be amazing. Funny. That would be exactly yeah. what they need. I was talking about I was talking with my dad about that today, actually. Cause my dad, you know, he, I was at my parents' house and you know, they, they get like the old school newspaper, um, you know, like, I, which I love. Cause I, I love that shit, man. Like, you know, every day I would, I would wake up like every day of my life, like growing up, I would read the sports section of the local newspaper. In fact, local Toronto newspaper. And in fact, we got both of them. So I'd read the Toronto star and I'd read the Toronto sun sports. So like the fact that they still get the newspaper, I was reading all about all the players that are, you know, the trade deadline bait. And number one on, in the article was, uh, was Mark Andre Fleury. Now I have my fears as a Leafs fan about it because I mean, the guy's 37, <laughs> you know, like it's like, and with goaltenders, like you never know, it could just, it could, he could be done. I mean, he's, he's been okay this year. He hasn't been amazing. You know, he's not playing on a great team at all, to say the least. But still, like, 
I don't know. Is it, is he the kind of guy that gets in there and says, all right, showtime. I've done this with two other teams. I've won Stanley cups. I've gotten to Stanley cups and it doesn't matter. And he's just, he puts on the blinders and there he is. Or is it like, do you start to see, you know, he doesn't get that blocker arm up fast enough. You know what I mean? I mean, he won the, he won the Vesna last year. I, I think the age thing is, is an argument that is, is aging out itself. To be honest with you, I think that he's playing out of his mind and, and, and to compare it, the Leafs play a hell of a lot like the Vegas Golden Knights do. They have a lot of firepower up front. When there's a drought, it's fucking scary because you're not putting the puck in the net and you're getting right. all these shots and it's just, you know, it's quantity, not quality. But Flurry could flourish on a team like that. I, I think that he could steal a few games and and at very least <laughs> uh, get the Leafs to the second round, which – I don't have my stat sheet in front of me, but when's the last time the Leafs made it past the first round? I know it's been quite some time. We don't don't need to. We can skip over this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, But no, I I I definitely agree. And and you're right. He did win a Vesna Trophy trophy last year, and that's to be commended. Um, No, I I definitely think it would be cool. Um, There's just there's some concerns, you know. I mean, Jack Campbell. They they put. I mean, you got to remember what twelve months ago, Frederick Anderson was the guy. And they, they pretty much kicked him to the fucking curb and yeah. brought in Jack Campbell. It was like, okay, well, now he's the guy. And now, okay, what, you're going to kick him to the curb right. too? Like, is there any – are we going to have any loyalty at all? Or it's just like who can stop a puck tonight, this week? Yeah. If you can't stop a puck this week, are you gone? Like, I just – I don't love that in terms of a, you're trying to build a team. However, um, the, probably the real story is, I mean, what's the – I mean, what's the cap hit? What, you know, like what is, isn't, 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 um, uh, flurry making like 7 million or something like that. Yeah. Like, the, the word is that they're, they're willing to eat basically half of his contract for this year for mm-hmm. a second or a third round pick is what I saw. It's like basically the same situation as Phil Kessel, where they're willing to rent this out for their future. Cause he knows that he's not going to sign back in Chicago. Why right. would anyone attach to that dumpster fire? So I don't know. You you could potentially get a goaltender for a fraction of the cost, but as you said, he's old. Is he going to get the start? Is he going to come playoff time? Is he going to be your number one, or is Jack Campbell? Well, it's right, a, it's a shitty spot too. Because like, if you bring him in, and you're like, all right, Campbell, like that's it. Like he's gonna be like, all right, fuck you, I'm gone. He's a UFA next year, and then Flurry's probably gone. You're left with Morazic and Oof. whoever can fit on your cap hit at that point. Like that's rough. That's rough. Yeah, the other guy's Holtby too. I mean, that's that's, I don't know. There's been some trade rumors about him as well, which we, you know, I don't know. Has he lost it? It's, I don't know. But um, it's it's definitely a big a big question mark with the Leafs right now. Is the goaltending possession defense to a lesser extent and forwards not at all? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's that's where we're at. And and I don't know. I mean, when you start to think look at the other teams and who they're going to be matched up at. Uh, much up against, you know, in, in the uh, uh, Eastern conference. I mean, I don't know. I, there, I don't know if there's anyone that I'm really super scared of, you know, I'm, um, I'm sure you would have said the same thing last year against the Habs though. Am I right on that? I mean, that's, well, it was a bad matchup for it, sure, it, but it was though kind of, and like, I mean, the Habs it's funny now. And I mean, Tyler, I'll give you full credit, full marks for saying, you know, the fucking Habs, like just, it was lightning in a bottle. It was like, they got all the puck bounces their way. They're not a good team. And look how they came out this year. Obviously there's been some major, major problems in the organization. And, and, you know, we don't need to talk about the Habs. I'd prefer to not talk about the Habs ever again in my life. (laughs) Um, But, but no, um, that's the thing though. There are tons of Habs fans in Toronto, including one of them in my band. And, they just they just love to shit talk the Leafs and the failure that the Leafs have been for 55 years. Um, and that's, you know, that's like not a good matchup, just literally for the whole mental side of the game that I was talking about. You Toronto Maple Leafs don't want to play a game in Montreal ever. Come on. It's not. It's, that's a bad juju, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Makes sense. Well, with uh, we have enough to talk about it, we have to harp on it, but with the Leafs uh, <laughs> underperforming consistently, I mean, 
that being said, like when they're out of the picture, like do you have another team where you're like, you know what? I think it'd be cool if these guys won, or does that change year oh, yeah. to year based on players or um that's a great question. Um, I think I think um growing up there were a few teams that I respected and I would say the team I respected the most is the D- Detroit Red Wings. Um, they just had uh, obviously original six team, like long history. Everybody loves Gordie Howe, you know, and then coming <laughs> not, in- a, not us, not <laughs> us blues fans, but yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you know, <laughs> regardless, <laughs> you know, um, you know, Stevie Eiserman and yeah. the entire you know, uh, 90s, early 2000s team. There just were so many players that were, I just respected Nicholas Lidstrom. I mean, that guy is like a, just, the guy's a saint. You can't hate Nicholas Lidstrom. Yeah. So, so, and and then of course the 20 plus year run playoff run they had. So I always, I always felt for the Detroit Red Wings. I live 10 minutes from Detroit right now, where I am right now, this very moment in the world. I'm 10 minutes from downtown Detroit. So I still go to wings games all the time. Um, and then, and then of course, um, there's the golden Knights and, um, you know, my sister lives in Las Vegas. She's lived there for 15 years. And, uh, I spend like every Christmas there and I go there a few times a year. You know, I, Tyler's like, Tyler probably sees me, me there more than some of his friends that live there. Yeah, um, you know, it's true. So, so when when the Golden Knights got a team, um, I said I said pretty much to everybody, uh, "Look, I'm been a Maple Leafs guy my whole life. It hasn't been treating me too well, and they're in different conferences. I am going to, essentially, I'm going to have two teams. You know, and what was funny was the the year that the the Knights came into the league." was like the same year the Leafs got really good too, you know? Yeah. So it was like, okay, now, now of course, like when it, when it rains, it pours um, with my fandom here. Um, but obviously I'm not alone in, in how exciting that inaugural night season was and what it meant to the city of Las Vegas, not just the fact that it was their first ever professional sports team, you know, for people that have been longing for it forever, people who have been who have been told, "Well, nothing will work there. You, there, we don't have any real fans. Everyone's just a fan, a fan of something else, or nobody's from Vegas." Like all this kind of bullshit. And you know, to see them, and not to mention the the shooting, and and how how kind of beautiful, you know, the whole Vegas strong. Um, um, I hate to call it a hashtag, but you know, you know what I mean. It was it was a beautiful movement. Thing. movement. Yeah, yeah, let's call it a movement. Um, how beautiful that all was. And then it was like just this Cinderella story of them, you know, what being two games away from from uh from winning the cup. So, you know, um that is very, very hard to look away from. Um, not to mention this is another personal note that for people that don't know. So one of you know, the first Vegas Gold Knights uh season, they had a lot of goaltending injuries. And they went down to about their fifth, fifth string guy that they called up. So, you know, I'm on the East coast hockey games. Don't start till 10 30 here. It's a little bit late. I don't catch them all. And I'm in bed and I, I see my phone is blowing up and people are tagging me because the Vegas golden Knights goaltender has Silverstein on his helmet, the words Silverstein on his helmet, uh, Max Legacy, uh, who was called up and he and he put this on his helmet. I'm like, well, this is freaking cool. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to contact him for sure. So got in touch with him. Um, you know, we became friends. We happened to be in Ottawa during there was a day game against the Knights in Ottawa. It was the weirdest thing. So he got us got us tickets and it was his first NHL win. We saw his first NHL win. That's sick. He, he gave me the his game worn jersey. Oh shit, uh, that's awesome. That, 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 I, nice. that I have. He signed it for me. Um, and yeah, we've we've kept in we've kept in touch. We've become become really good friends. You know, he's he's 
had a you know few stints now um, with different teams and both in the NHL and AHL. And um, so, you know, all those fat, all those things factored in to me being uh, a pretty, pretty big golden Knights supporter at this point as well. But, um, but I, I think I realized I, I was like, Oh, I'm going to be the biggest golden Knights fan in the world. And then when the Leafs got good, I was like, okay, I can't just, I can't just turn my back on 30, 35 years or whatever of, of, you know, growing up in Toronto. So, Hey, you Sorry, can. I know you, that was the longest answer to your question. Hey, uh, I'm living proof. You yeah. can, bud. You can. You can do it. I mean, but here's oh. the thing, though. I saw the Blues win a cup. I did, and and that was kind of a a uh, closing chapter to my blues fandom because it was, I, the coffin. <laughs> it, it was for me because watching them play each other was hell. And yeah, Tom, I, I remember Sorry, Tommy. Steve. Yeah, Tommy would like fucking give me shit, and he and he was non-stop. here nonstop, and he would come here, and I would go to St. Louis, and we would. It was just so many games, and 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 my friends thought it would be so funny. They'd be like, "Oh, hey, like I'll buy you tickets, but like, what jersey are you gonna fucking wear?" It's like, dude, this is like this is not fun for me. It's just not anymore, and and it took a, a lot of realization for me to be like, okay, you know what? Can't do it. Can't fucking do it. I mean, when the playoffs happen, it's a different kind of monster. I have different teams I cheer for and then uh, different teams I cheer against because these last two years, I'm like, okay, fuck the Habs. I was like, I'm not into that. And I was like, fuck the stars. So it's more so you gravitate towards the team that they're playing against, I feel like. But as you mentioned, you know, dude, yep. the hype, the hype, though, like going to a game here in Vegas, we've we've gone together. It's dude, it's. I I I I'm, I imagine going to a game in Toronto is probably hype too, but it, it's got to be close, right? Well, the the entertainment portion, and you expect it from Las Vegas, right? They've got that down. You know what I mean? They do an amazing job of putting together um, an entertaining experience, and I think that that just helps with the energy in the building with the fans. You know. But also, also, there's a couple things. I think what I said before about Vegas residents being constantly told you aren't worthy of having a professional sports franchise, um, them being constantly beaten down. I think the second they got one, they were like, well, we're taking this seriously, you know, and, and they have. And they're real. They're hockey fans. They're knowledgeable. And, um, just as knowledgeable as Toronto fans, honestly, I think. Um, and I, it, I mean, that it, means a lot because you got one team that's been in the league for five years and the other one, you know, since the beginning. And so yeah. coming from a, a, a Canadian hockey fan, I mean, that means a lot because, yeah. you know, a lot of people have given the night shit because they're new. And so they get hyped. I, I, I've seen the biggest um, the biggest gripe on the Internet is people go, oh, as soon as they carry out past the, the blue line, like people start cheering and it's like, I mean, you know what, now that you, you bring that up, why haven't we been that pumped? It's hey, because fucking battle. <laughs> yeah. It's like they, they got it there. Right. And they're a team that, <laughs> that works well in the transition. And I think a lot of new hockey fans just didn't understand that in the nineties and, and even before that way before that, but mainly the nineties, uh, having the puck in the opponent's zone and passing it for like three and a half years was like the normality and seeing these teams work in the transition is more exciting, right? Like just going right down the middle, watching Connor McDavid dance right. around fucking everybody on the opposing team or, or just darting, you know, coast to coast right down the middle and ending the damn thing. It's, it's more exciting. And I, I think it's made hockey uh, uh, as a whole more exciting to watch personally. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, well, you get to shoot the puck people everywhere. That's, you know, that's, that's fine. You know, it, it's fine. But you know, you know, my, my, my biggest gripe with the golden Knights and I've, this has bothered me since before they played their first game. I really hate that. They're the Vegas golden Knights and not yes. the Vegas golden Thank Knights. Thank you. It, yeah, bothers me. Agree. it bothers me so much. Like, because here's the thing. You know how many people I know that live in Las Vegas? A lot. And they don't really call it Vegas. Yeah, it's touristy. Vegas is, Vegas is more of a tour, tourist term than it is a local term. The same way that a lot, like nobody calls, uh, nobody calls San Francisco f- 
fucking Frisco. You get punched for you get punched for saying that. You know what I mean? People say people don't say even say SF or whatever they say. Right. People say San Francisco. A lot of people that live in LA they say Los Angeles. Maybe. Okay, but they call them the LA Kings. They call them the LA yeah, Kings. Okay. It's not the Los Angeles. That's that's they're just, the Los Angeles Kings. No, are. dude, it's LA Kings everywhere. Fuck that. It's not well, Los Angeles when you're, Kings. When you're when you're talking about them. Okay. When you're talking yeah. about them. Sure, it's shorthand for it. But I'm saying the official name being VGK Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. It, it kills me every time. I just so, that is the only thing that bothers me about the team. And like I know, I'm, I know Tommy agrees. I I agree to a certain extent, but. Here's what's crazy. They call them the Las Vegas Raiders. Dude, how hard is Vegas Raiders? Like, that, so vice versa. That's a way cooler name. Like, so the Las Vegas Golden Knights flows, right? It's for, it just makes sense. It's like, even the Vegas Raiders, in my opinion, is harder than the Las Vegas Raiders. I, I don't think it's about being hard. I just yeah. don't like that it's, it's not the name. Right. If you're not going to go with okay. the name of the city, which is Las Vegas, which is not Vegas. Then I don't know. Call them the fucking Nevada Golden Knights, like yeah. you know, or uh, that would be fine. The Paradise, the, the Paradise yeah. Knights, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's honestly though. That is that is my only gripe. I think the franchise is is beautiful. Um, I'm happy they employ my friend. Uh, you know, it's uh, my friends. I think it's I think it's um it's been such an incredible story for NHL expansion and for hockey expansion, because that's another thing we can talk about if you guys want is just about the idea of America and hockey growth. And, you know, I'm, I know Tyler and I, we butted heads like a little bit about uh, the Olympics, which obviously didn't pan out, but I believe and it, the NHL players in the Olympics is very important for the growth of the sport globally and especially in the United States. Yep. I, yeah, I, I think it would be fun. I just understand the business aspect in, in investing in a player millions of dollars and not wanting him to get hurt. And, and my biggest thing is that, yeah, we disagreed, but it was mainly under the COVID situation, knowing that these guys could be stuck there for a month after the fact and, and not able to, travel and you know what i i admit i was wrong though because a lot of players spoke out saying fuck it like fuck everything we want to go play for our countries we yeah. will we will quarantine and i mean kudos to them it, there was very few people that spoke out i know robin leonard was one of them where he was like nah like i i for my mental health i can't travel i'm gonna stay with my family but you're right i mean a lot of a lot of players were fucking pissed and they were bummed that they couldn't play yeah yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, Robin Leonard, Leonard's Swedish, right? Yeah. So I guess he's making he's making the team. That's always a that's always the he thing. Was, like, yeah, the guy, he was invited. Guy, he was invited. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. When when the he guys is, the guys complain, but they might not make the team. <laughs> that's, that's when I start to wonder. Yeah. Uh, but no, I I don't know, man. I just think um, I understand, and I I think if the players don't want to go. I think it that there is a little bit of their own risk. I understand that the teams, there's guaranteed contracts and all this stuff. Um, it would be very interesting to see what would happen if a player had a clause that was like, okay, you can go to the Olympics, but if you get hurt and you never play again, you're forfeiting your contract. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that would be a very interesting situation, uh, you know, to see how the players would respond. But I do, I do believe that, representing your country in the Olympics um, is to, to a lot of players, especially in the NHL, especially Canadians yeah. that have seen, that have seen, you know, the, the Sidney Crosby golden goal and, and those kind of moments. I think a lot of them would do it. They would even take the risk because it's that big. It's, it's in for Canadian, like for Canadians, it's very important. Like we, we want to be the best. And we are, we probably are the best. We should be the best. We should win every gold medal in hockey based on our, our history, our current players that we have in the league. We should win. So when we don't, I think we feel like a little bit slighted that, that it's like, a, we, 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 we got a little bit screwed or something. You know what I mean? I, I just, that's just my, this is my take on it. But, um, I do believe in the growth of hockey. And I, I remember 
um, how, I think it was, was it the last Olympics or, or the one before when um, TJ Oshi was like super sick at fucking, uh, <laughs> you know, at, at scoring Shoot out, uh, yeah. All these shots. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's like, Oh my God. And he's like the most loved American player. Like just because of that, it was like, that shit's cool. You know, yeah, that, yeah. that opened up so many people's eyes to, to the sport, you know? Yeah. And I mean, even more so, like, I just think almost when it comes to America, I think before maybe, maybe TJ Sochi, they called him, I think back in the day, because oh, yeah. he was in Sochi. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. Like, I feel it's like if American thinking is like, oh, like my favorite team, like the Blues or maybe, you know, the Knights, if they existed 20, 30 years ago, like, oh, like, I, I dream of game seven cup final, like scoring the game winning goal, right? Like, like Canada or even like Europe, like, Things for like Peter Forsberg and the one-handed, you know, shootout goal to help win for for them, right? Like, it's like those moments, like I'm playing for my country, like I'm playing for my people, like it just goes above and beyond. I feel like in America, for whatever reason, well, it just hasn't had the hype. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, look I at the lost. miracle. Look at the miracle on ice. True, that's, true. Yeah, that, true. that alone. That's that fair. Alone yeah, that's fair. Point for yeah. for what that meant to yeah. NHL and the fact that Bettman you know, it constantly is was like, Oh, I don't know. And the owners, obviously the owners don't want them to go because the owners are fine, you know, but it is, that was so important to hockey growth in the eighties and nineties, the miracle on ice in, in the United States. Like if the miracle on ice doesn't happen and Gretzky doesn't go to the Kings, where is the NHL? I don't know. It, I'm, it probably exists, but does it exist like it exists today? And yeah. those are the kind of moments that I think the sport needs and will continue to need to grow to compete with, you know, you know, the, the fandom that is the NFL and, uh, uh, and the NBA that's done an amazing job of expanding globally, you know, yeah, baseball. Be- uh, baseball. I was, I was gonna say if there's any <laughs> if, if there's any opportunity with where baseball is at with their lockout right now, I mean this exactly. might be a chance for NHL to potentially gain some ground, but sure. Um, yeah, I guess maybe changing gears a little bit. I mean, I guess on your side, Shane, like growing up, favorite player, like just short, short and sweet. Uh, Doug, Doug Gilmore, 100%. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. not, it's not even close. He's my, he's my favorite player by a, a country mile. Um, you know, he was, he was the best player in the Leafs and the captain in what I, for me, was like their golden era, you know, in the early 90s when I was really, just excited about sports and, and um, yeah, I, I mean, I just saw him on the, uh, on the TV doing a little interview and I just like, I just fucking love that guy. Um, and I, I honestly don't know if I could pick a second favorite okay. off the top of my head. Cause I just love Doug Gilmore so much. That's, I got, I have a Doug Gilmore Jersey, obviously. And uh, yep. What about, you know what, what about, you, you know, hold on. You know, what's yeah. funny about Doug Gilmore is I had to look it up just to make sure because I've I've had a few cocktails. So I was like, okay, am I imagining this or not? But we're blues fans where we grew up in St. Louis. I remember Doug Gilmore as a Chicago Blackhawk. And because oh, yeah. when I was paying attention to the most, I was 10 years old when he was on the Chicago Blackhawks. And that was like when I started loving hockey and couldn't stand the guy. And but I've gone back and and have obviously watched his career and 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 taken notes and obviously I get that he was much more a uh, Toronto Maple Leafs legend than he is a Chicago Blackhawks, but it's cool that they brought him back. It looks like I'm looking at his stats right now and they brought him back to retire him. So he played one game as a leaf in 2003 to secure his retirement. Yeah. And and he had to do that because he went to the Canadians. I don't know how he, I don't know how, (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah, he did. I don't know how he managed to do that. (laughs) That was, that was the thing. Um, I know there was a couple teams in between, you know, but, but yeah, he got his start with the blues. Right. And that's where he got his nickname killer. And, yep. and like, you know, he was, he was a great player, like, you know, a, a point, a game plus guy for the blues. Uh, and then the, he was great with the flames too. And, I, but I remember the trade uh, when they traded Gary Lehman, who was one of the better Maple Leafs players for, for Doug Gilmore. And I, I forget who was else else was in the trade. I could look it up. Um, here we go. Oh, I got it right here. It was oh man, Gilmore Google. Calgary Calgary sent Gilmore, Jamie McCowan. I remember him. 
and Rick Wamsley, goaltender. I remember him. Mm-hmm. For Gary Lehman, Craig Berube. Oh, Smith. shit. So, Craig Berube. Yeah, it's a big trade. It's like a yeah. 10. Coach 12, of the Blues. He's the coach 12, of the Blues right 10, now. 10 player. Oh, is he? 10 yeah. player. Yeah. 10 player, 10 player swap, the largest trade in NHL history. And I remember it very well, even though I was only 11 years old. Um, but I remember it very well. And then Gilmore just was like, he just fucking lit it up. And that was when the Leafs got good. And, um, I don't know. It just, I have some of the fondest memory. He's probably, he's, he's not only my favorite hockey player. He's probably like, he's probably like a top three athlete for me, honestly. Do we have to talk about this before we move on as you're, as you're talking about how he lit it up 32 goals, 95 assists for 127 points in 1992. And yep. then he did basically the same thing the next year, 27 goals, 84 assists for 111 points yep. in 93. I mean, that's just crazy. That's he absolutely got, insane. He, he was, he was a monster, man. He, he was just insanely good. I mean, you know, uh, and, and not only that, but like, I love the way he played the game. Um, I'd say my fit, my second favorite player was probably Wendell Clark, you know, same era. Yeah. And yeah. he played the game the same way. He had a tremendous amount of skill, but these were like tough, you know, character guys. Yeah. Right. You know, I want to know how many fights did Gilmore get in, in his career? Um, probably, probably a few, you know, um, it's not every up, day now that. Yeah. Backed up 144 penalty minutes in, in uh, 1991. So it's not, that's not nothing. Right. Yeah. It's not every day that like these studs that are putting up points are also like aggressive and fighting. It, I mean, it just doesn't happen. It's a yesteryear thing, you know, but it wasn't back then, you know, um, he was, his nickname was killer for more than one reason. So. I guess, yeah. well, I mean, well, flip side least favorite player who's one that just still to this day like your blood just boils here i think i know i think i know at least one there's only one oh i know (laughs) it i know it i mean it's such a cliche answer though i know it though i know it Uh, i think i know it it's got to be brad marchand i mean Mm, the guy is the fucking worst like especially you know the, the the collapse which which we which we know um now leafs fans remember this we'll never forget I don't know if, if every hockey fan knows this. There was the game, the game seven against the Boston Bruins. Um, I don't know what year it was. I've tried to erase it from my memory. I believe the Leafs were winning five to two in the third period in game seven when they blew it. Yeah. Now, let me tell you where I was in the world when that happened. I was in Japan. <laughs> okay. We're on tour in Japan wake up super early in the morning to watch the game, you know, like 8, 8 a.m. kind of thing to, to watch the game. So we're watching it and, oh, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great about myself. So um, <laughs> I'm on the phone. I leave. I leave third period. They're up by three goals. I'm in the oh, hallway no. calling my girlfriend at the time. You know, just talking about talking about whatever fucking I'm in Japan. It's great. Oh, yeah. You know, everything's good. So um, I see Paul Mark, like the, the other hockey fan in my band, um, Habs fan, unfortunately. So he kind of like pokes his head out of the, the hotel room because I'm in the hallway. And, he, you know, and I see him do it. So I'm like, you know, I don't think too much about it. Like, I don't know what he's doing out there. And I see him come out again. A few minutes go by and he's like, uh, Hey man, I hate to interrupt your call, but, uh, it's five, four. <laughs> I was like, what, what do you mean? It's five, four. It was just five, two. What do you, what do you mean? Or whatever the score is. I'm, I might be misquote, misremembering or misquoting. So then, yeah, I went in, watched the game and dude, I was, I was not okay, man. It happened yeah. really early in the morning. And I just was like, I've never been as like devastating devastating for me um and i mean i mean i hate brad marsham mostly because his attitude but i fucking hate chara um not a huge bergeron guy to be honest um you know just the boston bruins in general or <laughs> yeah you, you, and you, as you mentioned it was early in the day so you didn't even have a buzz going but i'll tell you well, this oh, much dude i when... hadn't had breakfast i didn't even <laughs> had coffee yeah 
no mimosas, no mimosas that morning. But uh, I'll tell you this much: when the the Knights lost because of that five minute major against the San Jose Sharks. Oh yeah, I was buzzed as a motherfucker in my living room, and I was, dude. I I'm I'm not ashamed to admit I cried. I cr- I cried because of a fucking game that I had no input on at all. And it was a fir- I think it was the first round, for second round. I mean, it was the, the year the Blues won. So that kind of softened the blow a little bit because I was still, you know, teeter-tottering a little bit 50-50 on that. But mm-hmm. I will say, mm-hmm. man, like watching a loss uh, where you're up, where you're up in the yeah. third period and you're that fucking stoked and you just think well, it's game over. I feel like hockey of all sports, other than football when you're playing against Brady, uh, <laughs> yeah. it, when you're up that much and you lose, it just, it fucking, it just well, kills you. I'll tell you the difference though. You can blame the referees, the NHL, the call, Gary Bettman. <laughs> I have no one to blame except the guys on the fucking ice that threw that game away. Right. Oh, yeah. So that is a way harder pill to swallow as a fan, knowing that there's no excuse. Nothing to hang your hat on. You just, yeah. you just suck. And that that was um that to me, like at that point, you know, and that was a shortened season. So it was a kind of a weird season, anyways. Like I think the Leafs had been playing kind of over their head. Like I don't think they even deserved to make the playoffs, honestly, that year. Um, from what I what I can recall. But sounds like the Montreal Canadians <laughs> last year, yeah. honestly. Well, exactly. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> But um, no, but quite quite honestly, like, you know, I think it's just sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, it, it is just like really, really tough when you are in that situation. And I think that that probably started the current uh, uh, depression <laughs> of the Toronto Maple Leafs like that was yeah. that that it was it's been going since 1967 and i'd like to point this out so that no one that's not a leafs fan has to the last time the leafs won the cup yes it was 1967 the kicker is in 1967 there was only six teams yeah mm-hmm. that's the worst part yeah. so in the modern era of the nhl when they ex- they've expanded the leafs haven't won since then which is even more disgusting so it's always been bad but this like has re this like reignited the you know the if you i mean people are t- starting to call it a curse or whatever now but um it's it's more just a mindset that we're fucking losers and we're never going to win and um we need to break it and i'm hoping that they've got the group of guys this year that maybe can but i would you say cautiously optimistic? Yes, no. correct, it, correct. Optimistic isn't even the right word. Cautiously so, pessimistic. <laughs> I don't know. Op, like, realistic, realistic. Realistic, yeah, I don't know. So we have a couple more questions left, but before we do these yeah. last two, let's cheers to saying fuck Brad Marchand because we all yes, agree to that, yes. right? That's, so that's, cheers that's to that. Easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guy's a fucking, guy's a fucking liquor. Take yeah. That how, take that how you, however you want. <laughs> Clown yeah, shoes no. for sure. Um, not a fan. Not a fan. So not this a is a fan. question we ask uh, all of our uh, guests that we have on. It's actually one of my favorite uh, questions, and it's um, what's the best hockey movie of all time? And you can translate that as whatever you want, your favorite, greatest, whatever it has to. But when when you put in, if you're sitting on your couch, you're drinking yeah. a Miller Light or a Labatt. Or uh, um, a Molson, whatever it is that you uh, that you you know want to have that night, and you want to watch a movie that's hockey oriented. What are you putting on the TV? Yeah. You know, I don't know if this is a common answer. I like that. I really like that movie Goon. Okay. Um, from fuck yeah, yeah. awesome. Good. I like ten that. years ago. Um, I know like uh, uh, Stifler is in it. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and his name escapes me right now too. What's his fucking name? John William Scott. That's John yeah. William Scott. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody knows him as, as Stifler. Stifler, and, yeah. Um, Stiffmeister. Jay, Jay Burchell, um, the, the you know, she's out of my league. That guy, he actually, I believe, 
directed the movie or wrote the movie? Yeah, I think both. Yeah. And, and he's a Habs uh, fan, but we'll let that slide. <laughs> yeah, he's from Vancouver too, which is weird. Um, Eugene Levy's in it. Uh, Kim Coates from from Sons of Anarchy's in it. It's it's a really cool movie. I like that it's a little bit different. And um, yeah, quite quite honestly, like I just that to me is is like a cool hockey movie that isn't just about a bunch of kids skating around feel good story. Like there's a little bit more realness to it. I feel than like the people you probably ask on your show and they say the mighty ducks, you know, um, we've only, yeah. we've only gotten mighty ducks one time. Um, well, uh, yeah, it, it hasn't happened as often as I think uh, slap shot slap yeah, shot is, a, is the most sure. common answer for sure. It's a great, and it's a great answer. Um, yeah. The cutting edge is a good movie too, actually from the nineties. Um, I've never even heard of this. Do I, am I oh, a no? uh, What is this? Well, it's, it's more of a figure skating movie than it is a, than it is a hockey movie. So maybe it doesn't count, but it's a, it's about like a hockey and I've, Oh my God. I haven't seen the movie in like, well, it's 30 years old. So it's, I probably haven't seen it in 29 years. Um, but I remember it being good. And I remember, um, I have a copy of it on DVD cause someone gave it to me, but I never opened it and I still have it. And I saw it today, which is weird. The weirdest part, which is why I'm thinking about it. But the uh, I, I believe the premise is that uh, the guy, the guy in the movie is like a hockey player and he, he like doesn't make the team or something happens or he has to retire from like hockey. And then this other like chick, she's a figure skater. So then they become like figure skaters together. It's I don't know. It's a pretty good movie. That's all I have to say about it. It's a pretty good movie. It's called, I think it's called, yeah, Cutting Edge. It's a good movie. Anyway, um, l- let me get to this point. I have never seen Mighty Ducks. What? Wow. Any of them. Dude, Any of what them. the fuck? Never no. seen it. No, no dude. Serious. What I'm the serious. fuck? I, I you, can't, you, can't, How? you can't start now. I can't even. If, if you can, okay, you know what? Actually, I feel like the first one still translates as an adult. That now this if you start with the second or third you're gonna you, you're gonna be like fuck this but the first one is ironically enough the most serious it's kind of like a drama mm. so it's not like when people tell you oh you don't like Harry Potter well you have to keep watching oh, okay. the movies yeah, like right. I feel like the first one you can, you can probably enjoy the first one but wow Shane what the fuck so have you, I, have you told I, me I, this. I, I, I don't, I'm, I don't know if I've ever told anyone this. So <laughs> I, 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 so it was weird. They, I mean, I was, I must've been pretty young when they came out still, but like, even at the time I like kind of knew they were lame. Does that make any sense? Like, I know I was like fucking 12 or something when they came out, but I still like, was like, yeah, I don't know if this is for me. Like it felt like it was for kids or something, even though I was a kid, I didn't like it. And I never, I never saw it. And what's the funniest part about all this is um, fairly recently, like within the last 10 years, when that band Knuckle Puck came out, Mm -hmm. I was like, that's got to be, and I said to somebody, I was like, that's got to be the worst fucking name for a band (laughs) I've ever heard. And I, and I like the band. Like, I think the band is so sick. And I'm like, what the fuck are they called? Knuckle puck? What is that? And somebody's like, oh, it's like a reference to Muddy Ducks. And I just like pretended I knew what they were talking about. Like, oh, yeah. They, you know, they, they've said they hated it too, which kind of bums me out because like it's, in my opinion, being uh, a fan of, of the the Mighty Duck series, I think it's an amazing name. But okay. it, also, it also doesn't fit their band though. Yeah. Like the name Knuckle Puck sounds like it would be like a four year strong ripoff. With like breakdowns uh, and like riffs, and they Knuckle- are a little more, little a little less serious, right? Because yeah. yeah, and Knuckle Puck is like, you know, we're gonna cry about our parents and how they never loved us, and and we're gonna we're gonna shoegaze and stare at our, our feet. Yeah. I mean, great, great yeah. band, great band. I, I do like Knuckle Puck, but hey, Knuckle Puck sounds to me like you're about to, you know, beat some ass and crap yeah. kill some and like break. About to go down. Right. Totally. <laughs> yeah, but that, there you go. So I can't see Mighty Ducks because I've never seen it. But I mean, it's not it's never too late, right? Yeah. Dude, the first movie, go watch it. I think it's good. I It holds up. Now, if you started with the second one, you would be like, this is goofy. And you know what's weird is it kind of takes shape like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies where the first one is oh, yeah. way too serious. You're like, holy shit, like this movie is actually like good. 
And then the second one is like entertaining but goofy. Very similar. So yeah, it's never too late. Oh, I've seen I've seen the Ninja Turtles movies, that's for sure. In my nope. opinion, watch the first Mighty Ducks, don't watch the rest. That's my opinion. Okay. That's yeah. that's you could say that about most movie series. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, there's very few where the sequels are even close to the first one. So okay. Agreed. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm going with I'm going with Goon. I think Goon is a a really a really good movie for anybody that likes hockey that hasn't seen it yeah love it love it well now the capitals do this like player scores a goal they have like their own goal song so okay. yep if you were in the nhl and every team did that and you scored a goal you could actually skate all this stuff <laughs> what's i, I mean I'm, the roast. I'm, not, the I'm, roast. Not, I'm not one to talk i'm not the best skater <laughs> whatsoever either but yep. um what would your goal song be so this is not a thing. They aren't. They aren't making goal songs for individual players yet, are they? The yes. capital. The capitals do it. The capitals do. Yep. Yeah. Capitals so like TJ Oshie has like Country Roads, for example. So anytime oh, he scores Country Roads, Country Roads blast. That's kind of a sick song. No, because yeah. because like, uh, and I'm buying biding a little time while I think about this. But um, yeah, like like for example, the Ducks have Pennywise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the like best, goal, best, goal. Best, best, best hands down. We it's all agree. Yeah. 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 yeah it, that's a super sick um, goal song. So my own personal goal song. I'm going to go with um, Why Can't We Be Friends? Why Can't We Be Friends? <laughs> okay. I, feel like that would, I feel like that would piss off the other team like a yeah. lot. Wait, wait. So are you going to go the smash, the smash Mouth version of that? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> hey, it's a good it's a good version of the song, right? Or who did the original? I don't even is fucking it, know. Oh, oh, was it Smash Mouth that covered that? Dude, Smash Mouth is the That's punk funny, rock version of it. Already, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I thought that was maybe like real big fish or something. But, no, it's on um, the soundtrack. You're you're on to on to something. It's on the soundtrack oh, basketball. to basketball. Ah, yeah, okay. amazing probably... soundtrack. So you just picked a Smash Mouth song as your goal song, and I it solidified our that's, friendship, Shane. Honestly, legendary. well, very if legendary. Anybody, if anybody wants to email me, my email address is smashmouthfan69 at hotmail.com. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. If, if you'd that's, like to get we, in touch, we literally like were, in touch with me, we were literally just <laughs> that's amazing. Oh man. Well, I'm, Shane, like, I'm sort of stealing Tyler's joke, but it, no, I'll take I'll, credit for it. I love it, dude. Shane, thank you so much for for joining the podcast, man. It, yeah. it, it's been a blast. This has been one thank of my favorites. Guys. I don't I don't know if it's because I've completed this many cocktails and this many drinks, but or you're just a rad dude. But we appreciate I, it so much. Um, I had two and I had two and a half American beers. That's like that's like a half a Canadian beer. So uh, okay, I'm feeling Fair. I'm completely sober. Um, so before, before we end though, I feel like we need to talk a little bit about music, right? I mean, Silverstein's got a new album coming out from what I can tell. You got some, yeah. some tours coming on the, uh, yeah. let, let's talk about what, what the, the future, the future of yeah. Silverstein. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, well, my, you know, my band is called Silverstein and we are playing, um, we are starting a tour in the end of March with, with a uh, bear tooth. Okay. And the Devil Wears Prada and Era. It's a, it's a pretty pretty cool tour. We're playing a lot of sort of random cities, um, which is surprising. Like if you live in Fort Wayne, Indiana, giddy up. Uh, if you live in Trenton, New Jersey, or Hidalgo, Texas, which I've never heard of, we're coming. So that's pretty cool. And um, and we have a new album, which is uh, com- we've completed. It's our tenth album, and it's coming out on May sixth. Uh, it's called Misery Made Me which is uh it's exciting i feel like it's it's pretty cool to be making maybe our best music 10 albums in because that doesn't happen with a lot of bands so it feels pretty good that and i'm not just saying that other people are saying that too i'm saying that Uh, dude you guys are progressing so well man yeah i'm I'm proud as fuck thank you so it's a it's a big year 2022 is a big year especially with the last couple uh years being and not big years or, and I'm not just saying for us, for any musician, you know, us being uh, sidelined, um, you know, fucking groin injury or whatever, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I'm thinking of a common hockey injury. Pull, uh, pulling no, my we, dick. You're pulling been, my dick, uh, Shane. We've been, we've been sidelined, obviously, with the pandemic and all that shit. So to be back, 2022, big year, new record, lots of touring. We'll be, we'll be announcing some more uh, shows throughout the year. Uh, and we'll, we'll be in Vegas on yep. April second. I want to say Brooklyn. Yeah, about Ball. A, yeah, about a month. There. A month from right now. So I'm excited, man. It's going to be 
a good night. Uh, Brooklyn Bowl, right? I yep. believe again. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Great, it's going to be play. a great time. I'm so, going to have to roll out for that one. Granted, I'm in Southern I'm California. On. You'll be you'll be coming by Anaheim in a couple nights, but I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, yeah. Oh, you're in, you're, in, uh, you're in Southern California. Yeah, that's where I'm at now. So either way, I'm oh. sure we'll, we'll both catch it for sure. Why'd you leave St. Louis? Damn. I mean, <laughs> so many reasons. Why, did, why so does sorry. anyone leave St. Louis? Louis? <laughs> it's not the pizza. I'll tell you that much. That's or the true. toasted raviolis. No, Shane, dude, it's it's been an honor, man. Uh, love you, dude. It's it's been great chatting hockey. Yeah, great episode. Uh, I'm sorry if I did all the talking. Um, I tend to do that. Yeah, and I and to tell the people too, I got a podcast. I talked to other lead singers called Lead Singer Syndrome. You can you can get it wherever you get your podcast, including probably where you get this one, Lead Singer Syndrome. Check it out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, buddy. Uh, it's been a great episode. It's been fun. Uh, make sure you guys check out Silverstein on tour next month end of this month and their new shit's awesome so we appreciate it go leave take care, go. <laughs> take care. appreciate you Shane. thanks guys